Does anyone remember back when comparing your political opposition to the Nazis used to be mocked? It's called Godwin's Law and it used to be the last bastion of somebody who was losing a debate. The definition of Godwin's Law is an internet adage asserting that as an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison involving the Nazis or Hitler approaches. So it should be no surprise that several of the Democrat presidential candidates have stooped to comparing Trump and his followers to the Third Reich. Yesterday, Beta Beto gave a press conference where he compared Trump to the Third Reich and then spewed lie after lie in defense of his stupid comparison. Let's go over some of his claims and see if there's any truth to them. Better you compared the Trump administration to Nazi Germany. Can you elaborate on that? Why did you make that comparison? Well, I compared the rhetoric that the president has employed to rhetoric that you might have heard during the Third Reich. Uh, calling human beings an infestation is something that we might have expected to hear in Nazi Germany. Wrong. His first claim is that Trump called, quote, immigrants an infestation. I found several articles that made this claim, including one from CNN with the headline, Trump re-ups infestation rhetoric in immigration debate. After reading the headline, I figured that they had to be misquoting him or purposely misrepresenting what he said, and unsurprisingly, I was correct. This is what Trump actually said. We have an infestation of MS-13 gangs. He never once said anything about immigrants. He specifically singled out MS-13 gangs. How else would you possibly describe gangs other than an infestation? And who in the hell runs to the defense of gangs? Uh, stupid question. So clearly CNN and Beta are lying their asses off here, and I have no idea why there was no pushback from that Fox reporter. Maybe she just didn't know any better, but the problem is this is exactly how drive-by media lies become truth over the course of time through repetition. And it's really not a good sign that you have to go to a guy on YouTube to get the truth that our so-called free press actively works to manipulate. Again, what in the hell is up with the media and these Democrats defending MS-13? This isn't the first time they've done it either. Remember back when Trump called MS-13 animals? The media and the Democrats responded just like this, claiming that he was calling immigrants animals. I even read one ridiculous BBC headline that read, Trump, immigrant gangs animals, not people. Immigrant gangs? Now, that's Orwellian. They just had to get the word immigrants in there so they could get the desired reaction of outrage. Now, I obviously can't show you every headline, but just take a look at my search results here. Over and over, the claim that he called immigrants animals when he specifically said MS-13. Seeking to ban all Muslims, all people of one religion. What other country on the face of the planet does that kind of thing? Or in our human history? Or in the history of the Western world? Um, because they are somehow deficient or violent or a threat to us. When did Trump ban all Muslims? He didn't. This is yet another example of how the media will misrepresent the truth so that Democrats can then use that misinformation as a weapon against Trump and Republicans. Trump banned seven countries based on the threat that they pose, not based on their national religion. Of those seven countries, five of them were Muslim-majority countries, but not all Muslim-majority countries are on the ban. And in fact, there are 46 Muslim majority countries that are not on the ban list. Another inconvenient fact is that Barack Obama placed travel restrictions on these same seven countries. I don't recall anybody in the media or any Democrats comparing Obama to the Third Reich for doing that. Trump's ban doesn't even outright ban all Muslims from those countries. There are exemptions such as any lawful permanent resident of the U.S. or any person who has valid document other than a visa granting admission to the U.S. or any dual national from a restricted country who is traveling with a passport from a non-restricted country or any person granted asylum by the U.S. Beta's comparison to what Hitler did to the Jewish people is downright offensive. There were no Jewish terrorists bombing or attacking Germany. Hitler rounded up Jewish people, put them on trains, put them in death camps, and then executed them. Nothing like that is happening or will happen. Um, putting kids in cages, uh, saying that neo-Nazis and Klansmen and white supremacists are very fine people. Okay, I'm really, really tired of going over this point again and again, so I'll be brief. Kids who enter the country illegally are detained and kept with their parents unless the parents are being prosecuted, in which case they are separated. This is not a Trump policy. It's done this way because of a Ninth Circuit Court ruling called the Flores decision. Kids were being put in cages under Obama and past presidents without any of the outrage, and in fact, the picture that kicked this whole thing off was taken during the Obama administration. Beta also made the easily debunked claim that Trump called white supremacists very fine people. He never did that, and in fact, he specifically said that he wasn't talking about white supremacists and condemned them. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. 
Trump was talking specifically about people who were there to protest the taking down of any historical monument because they were rightly concerned that Washington and Jefferson would be next. The pattern we see emerging here is the continued coordination between the media who edit footage and create false narratives that the Democrats then use as a weapon against Trump and the Republicans. You can definitely expect the media to continue ramping up this tactic as we get closer to the 2020 election. One last thing, folks, that super badass t-shirt that my wife designed will be out next week, so keep checking back for it. I also wanted to thank everybody who recently donated to me on PayPal and to all my new supporters on Patreon. I literally could not do this without all of you. If you enjoy my content and you want to help this channel grow, please consider supporting me on PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can find the link in the description or the pinned comment. Thank you.